Hey, it's Bill Gross, the LA probate expert, and we are not in the middle of a housing crash. I don't care how many times the news tells you that or YouTube. Don't believe it because importantly, the data does not support it, and I'll show you exactly why it the uh, through this video. So let's talk about it. the The thing that surprises me, and I talk about this all the time, is the data in real estate is so bad. It's so misleading. It there for some reason the sources of information that are available to me as a professional, to you as a consumer, are just rotten. And let me show you what I mean. Here's National Mortgage News. Pretty legitimate organization overall. Housing listings are up. Not true. Ready to close more loans. Not sure what that has to do with anything. Then you read, and let's look at their reasoning. Let's look at their data as if there, there isn't. There's supposed to be some. A wave of fresh home listings. Now, I don't know what a wave looks like. Could be small, could be large. Could be a tidal wave. Doesn't really d d define that. Hit the housing market in June. Let me tell you something. Homes, uh, new listings come every month. Good month, bad month. In the worst of the 2008 month, there are a lot. Some months fewer. There's always more coming in. Uh, in the inventory projection, and then it says, many in the industry project home inventories will continue to grow through July and August. Many. Who? Article doesn't say. So really, there is no data. There's no real information here. This is just one person's uh, pontification, because when you look at the actual data of where the market is, you're going to find that the actual new, the actual inventory actually went down week over week, according to Teradatum. Actually went down. Actually went down back towards the record low of all time last year during a global pandemic. Actually, well below 2020 at the beginning of the global pandemic. Well below. What were the previous record year lows, 2018 and 19? So it's not only below all-time pre-pandemic levels, maybe we're out of the pandemic now, maybe we're not, below all-time levels and dropping. But mortgage news wants you to, national mortgage news wants you to believe that housing listings are up and a fresh wave is hitting. Complete nonsense. So why do they do this? I don't really understand. I don't know what their motivation is. Does that sell them clicks? Does that get them uh, um, um, more people on the website? I don't know. So you go, well, who would be a great source of information on real estate? Maybe the California Association of Realtors, which I love the organization as a member. I think they do a great job on contracts and procedures uh, on representing our industry. But in terms of information, they're as bad as everybody. Take a look at their latest press release. Now, first off, latest press release, July 18th. So they're doing one a week and then just stopped about three weeks ago. I don't know if that, there's some personal issues or overall issues. But the other thing is that that July 18th press release, when you read it, it's June home sales. Now, think about this. Not only are June home sales data now old, right? You're talking about July, and here we are in August, so it's over a month old. But really, June overall is a month. Half of June is the first half, and half is the second half. Even the month is a bit dated. Why do we not get weekly numbers from the organizations that are supposed to give us information? And I think it's because it's not about giving us good information. It's really just about getting attention to their websites or for whatever reason. Now, the next one I'm a little careful with because I, I respect this guy so much. I love Ask Kevin. Uh, Kevin is a great source of information on financial markets, investing. He's one of those kind of day trader guys. He's been right about Tesla for the longest time. He's connected with another one of my favorite influencers and a mentor, Ross Gerber. But Ask Kevin... The 2022 housing market crash is here. Not is coming. It's here. Now, look around the market. You don't see a crash. You don't see homes for sale all over like we did before. You don't see home prices going down. So now he's a really smart guy. I don't really understand why he's on this issue. When you read his, uh, I'm sorry, listen to the video here, which I did, and I love him. He's very entertaining. I guess I might consider this um, uh, data porn or real estate information porn. He cites two factors that he says are critical to causing the uh, crash. And these are two numbers that a lot of 
analysts point to that are really irrelevant. Number one, housing affordability. And they show these charts where less people than ever can afford houses. Okay, what does that really mean? It means, which is true and might be a big problem, that we have really a, a, a divide in America where we have people who can afford houses and people who can't. And that's why there's really more, more rental and that's why there's more homelessness. Now, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not advocating it. What I am saying is the fact that half the population can't afford to buy a house is irrelevant to where the market is going in the future and even the long run. And you might say socially it's unstable. I don't disagree. But it doesn't mean the housing crash is happening because half the market can't afford a home because at least half the market can. And more importantly, there's plenty of new people coming to the market with money and income to buy a house. Not only that, what's misleading is many people who own a house aren't selling, but they, they can't afford to buy the house they're in. It doesn't really matter. My neighbors next door bought their house, I think, in 19, I want to say 96, for like hundred and fifty or $200,000. And today it's worth $2 million. Well, they couldn't afford, the, as far as I know, I, I don't want to speak for them or point them out personally, but generally people like that don't have $600,000 extra for a down payment and can't afford to go out and borrow $1.4 million. They're basically retired and living a comfortable life in retirement. They can't buy the house. And not only that, they couldn't afford the property taxes. If they bought it for $2 million, the annual property taxes would be $24,000 a year. That's more than their current mortgage and insurance and taxes. But here's the key part. That they can't afford to buy the house new doesn't mean they're going to sell. And more importantly, it doesn't mean the market's going to crash. So home affordability is one of those statistics that it looks scary, but doesn't really predict where the market's headed. The other one is, that I think is equally misleading, is new home building. Why is that misleading? Well, again, what they don't often talk about is its effect on the overall market. What do they really mean? Here's a, here's a graph that shows new single-family homes for sale. And it is true that home builders are in trouble. And I would say in some markets where there's a lot of home building, Phoenix and uh, Las Vegas and, and Texas, that there are some micro markets where there's going to be a lot of inventory and their housing, housing prices might get cut. But take a look at the numbers. Yes, it's going up. It's gone up tremendously, though. Maybe it's starting to slow down. But what this says is there's 400,000 new homes for sale. The all-time lowest was 150. So where would healthy be? Healthy would be at 350. Healthy, that was where it was pre-pandemic. <clears throat> and let's say it goes as bad as it had been all time, from 350 to 550. So an extra 200,000 homes will be on the market. Is that so terrible? Well, no, because we're missing, if you look at the, the uh, market statistics, oops, last I spot here, um, there we go, inventory, we're missing about 400,000 homes. We're only at adding, uh, we're at 455 now total homes. And pre-pandemic, the record was over 800,000. We're missing about 350,000 homes, meaning we need more homes in America to meet people who want to buy houses today by 350, 400,000. So the fact that the new home sales might go up 100, 200,000 of available inventory overall could be a good thing. Now, again, it's going to be tough in those small markets where there's too many houses for sale. And already we do see builders cutting prices and facing financial difficulties. But that doesn't mean that the new home builders in those markets are going to change the market overall in the country or even in any major region. So where are we left? When we look at the overall data, what we see is a continuation. I've done this series now for months, and it's still true. Inventory is historically low, below pre-pandemic levels. It's almost the lowest ever again. It's dropped after going up for a few months, has started to come back down again. It's true that new listings are coming on the market, but those numbers are dropping. Why? Because some home sellers are deciding not to relocate because they can't afford the payments. That takes it off the market. Homes under contract, still lower than most years. Home sales are way down because the activity is down, but not the prices, and that's the key part. And so what you have to correlate the difference between home sales are down but prices are not going down. It's kind of like a gasoline. Prices went up, sales of gasoline have gone down. And here's another statistic that just jumps off the page to me. Off-market sales 
are jumping up. And so what that means is people, while there's less inventory, they're finding homes off the market. And that's filling their needs. As long as that number's high, it tells you there are people looking for houses more so than they're available for sales. As long as more buyers want to buy than there are sellers to sell, housing prices will go up. Maybe slower than the last two years, but inevitably housing prices have to go up. So what should you do? Well, I say, number one, don't panic. And number two, do what's right for you. If it's time for you to sell your home, maybe cash out equity towards retirement or cash it towards uh, investment income and downsize, it's a great time to downsize. You'll get a great price for your home. And if you're looking to buy a house first time and you're going to live there and live in any house in that area for 10, 20, 30 years, great time to buy. Rates are below the highs of 6% down to uh, below 5.5%. So really you do you and let the market worry about itself, but there is no sign based on data that the market's crashing. If I can help anyway, call me, text me, email me. Bill Gross, the LA Probate Expert. And as always, make today your best day ever.